year for you guys and how things turn around? Um, that's a that's a hard one. I just think the the story of the game. Well, here's what I felt like. I I, I felt like our guys competed great. I thought I thought we just we had tremendous effort, tremendous energy, intensity, focus, uh, attention to detail. I thought it was all great. Um, the reason we lost the game is we shoot 24 percent the second half, and you know what? As a coach, I'm never going to fault that unless guys are just playing selfish, which I didn't think we did at all. I thought we uh, had some really, really good shots that didn't go in, and I thought there were periods when. Defensively, TCU did a great job. We had some stretches where we were having a hard time getting a good shot. So you got to give them credit. I mean, you have to give them credit for that. Um, but that was the story. That was the story of the game is we offensively as hard as we were trying. I mean, how can you how can you not love a team that got 20 rebounds, offensive rebounds on 39 chances to get it back? That's over 50 percent of your misses to get back. That's good gosh. As a coach, there's nothing you could ever hope for effort-wise uh, more than that and uh, defensively we were great the first half uh, you know Fisher hit some big big threes the second half give him a lot of credit you know, he's coming back from injury and he uh, certainly played with a lot of confidence but uh, you, you can't say they didn't play a very good defensive half but um, at the same time I thought you know I thought we did have some opportunities that we, we couldn't cash in was Fisher's shooting in the second half a result of simply him getting hot, or did the defense change in a way that allowed him different looks? Uh, that, well, you know, they're, they're a hard team to guard. Look at their numbers. Look at their, you know, nationally, look at some of the numbers that they're, look at their three-point percentages and how many guys coming into this game. I want to say 36% was the worst three-point shooter uh, of the four perimeter players. Well, then five if you bring Noy into it. Um, so they they, got, they they stretch a floor pretty darn good. And, and uh, Robinson is a great point guard this year. Right? He's playing better than I've ever seen him. Look at his assist. He's one of the top assist guys in the country. So it's not not a simple task getting all the buyers put out. And uh, and I thought we did for the most part one heck of a job. Fisher hit a few tough shots and. A couple times you're going to break down. That's that's going to happen. In, you know, the major college game of this level you can't be perfect. But uh, they did play an, an outstanding second half. They did, and, and uh, our effort was great. We just couldn't get the ball in the basket for the second half. Thron Hunt has a little bit of history with TCU. <coughs> what did you see out of him tonight? He was he was tremendous. He was absolutely tremendous. Uh, continues to get better. He's. Uh, I think he's got a, 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 just an outstanding future. Uh, what I love about him most is how passionate he is about the game, how passionate he is, how much he loves basketball, how, how passionate he is to be a great player. Um, it would surprise you maybe to, that everyone's not that way, that, that is on college scholarships. At least that's been my experience over years and years. Everyone is not cut in exactly the same way. He's cut in at a very, very high level. He wants it really badly. He's also blessed with great athletic ability. And uh, I thought he, he did not look at all like a freshman tonight. He was a great player in that game tonight. Tim, where, where is this team right now for 10 games? You guys are 6 and 4. What do you see uh, down the road here? Well, I've said, from, I've said this before we ever started the season. We're, we're, we're still behind. You know, we're not where we're. I've, I've never coached a team on the, in December that is this far behind in just some habits and some well, a lot of things. I mean, I, 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 I it's like I, I say this every single time, but it is it's the truth. We are not where uh, I've ever coached a team or been around to the to the point you would usually be to this point or we're to this point and. It's, it's, I don't believe it's anybody's fault. It's the fault that we have not had enough guys a lot of days to practice five on five. And, you know, we have 30 days before we start the season that they allow you to practice, and I think we probably had eight of those days playing five on five. And, and that's you cannot advance, particularly when you have four guys returning. I think we have we have four guys returning because of 
probation and injuries and guys going pro. And so <coughs> I knew this. I knew this a month ago. But we are gaining on it. And, and, and that's the very best we can do is with the situation that we're presented with. Uh, obviously, Jure and Everett have been out since January. They, you know, Jure's just coming back. Everett's still not practicing. The scholarships that have been still taken away from us. Uh, and then, of course, other guys get dinged up, and we went to practice 20 days with seven guys, you know. Even our walk-ons are hurt, believe it or not. Really, I'm not kidding. It's, you guys can't even make this up. You know, we, we got walk-ons that are hurt. So, so we're behind. And, and, uh, but lately, we're gaining. You know, we are gaining. But so is everybody else. Everybody else is having practice, too. And they're, you don't want to start behind because, you, you know, you've got to expedite. It's not going to be easy. But I do have, I have uh, optimism for this team. Tonight gave me more, even though you know, we had a rough shooting night for 20 minutes. But the effort was great. And I think you have to start there. You have to start with effort, toughness, togetherness, all those kind of things have to be present to sustain a season and to improve and to become a good team or a great team or an outstanding team. Those things have to be there. And I think we are at least gaining on that and starting to get an understanding, starting to get an understanding of how hard you have to play and how much attention to detail you have to pay. At the same time, you have to build habits and you can only build habits through day after day after day after day, the same kinds of practice. You don't get it you know, once every four days and watch the film. So that's our challenge and it's the one um, you know, we're embracing and I'm still optimistic we can be a very, very good team. Coach, from your vantage point, what have you seen about the job Jamie Dixon has done over at TCU in his now third season? He's doing, doing an outstanding job, yeah, for sure. I mean, they're a very good team, and they were a good team last year, so, you know, he should feel very good about it. How, how much do you look at what they've done over at TCU and in, in the two programs in the last two years and, and assess where you guys are at and how you get back to? You know, yeah, well, I think, you know, they're, I think the big thing that, people have completely forgotten is we're on probation. You know, we're, we've had the most scholarships ever taken away. I don't believe TCU is on probation. Am I correct? correct? Right. They're not on probation. And we are on probation. And we've been on probation the entire time I've been here, which is, again, the most scholarships ever taken away from a college basketball team. Ever. And somehow, you know, I guess we'll be judged like as if everything is hunky dory. Like you guys are, we forgot that a couple of years ago was postseason ban, but we still live it every day. We still live. We live it. I, I think I've coached seventy or eighty games here. And I think forty-five of them we've coached with seven scholarship players or less. Now think about that. That's our reality. So I am. I know that as a coach, we are, we are, should be, we are judged, we are, you know, always, but I also, I don't think people even have an idea of what we are up against on a daily basis, so, I mean, do you know all our pro, but do you know the sanctions, you know, do you know our sanctions, you do? For the most part. Yeah, so that's what we, you know, weeks at a time where we couldn't recruit, seven weeks at a time, we have to go dark two years in a row, and so this is what the public doesn't know, and this is what we live. And it's very frustrating to me. I live it every day, and I'm proud of the fact that we've done as well as we have. If you look at history of teams that are on probation, I don't think most of the times they do as well as we have. So I'm looking forward to a day when we're a normal program that has normal scholarships and a normal chance to recruit without 15 different rule sanctions, scholarship reductions that we have to live with. That's the day I'm really looking forward to. So I don't know how you can compare us to anybody else except other programs that are living with the probation that, that we have. You held Jamal with 22 shots. Did you feel like you guys were over relying on him for offense? Uh, probably, uh, you know, but he's a heck, of a, a heck of an offensive player. And, you know, some games, one guy, some games, five guys. Uh, I, I don't know if we were over relying on his percentage was were pretty good. It didn't hit so much from three, but uh, you know maybe we could say that. But we just you know we didn't do a good job of getting in the flow. We got great shots the first half, um, 
and some of those the second half just missed, but not as many. So um, that's a hard question. I'd have to watch the film on that to see really to see what was going on with that. When Jamal and Jalen Fisher started talking toward the end of the game, did you worry at all about them getting sort of drawn into more of a one-on-one -on -one game and get, maybe getting out of the system at all? Um, no. I, you know, I thought it was great that it really got the crowd involved. I thought that was a real positive. I don't usually like you know guys doing that because normally it ends up in a technical foul, and I don't think those are good. But the crowd seemed to like it. Uh, but with Jamal, I've seen him uh, – no is the answer because I've seen Jamal, you know, sometimes when you get him in that mode, he can just hit some incredible shots. So, uh, honestly, I wasn't at that, at that moment. Anyone else? Uh, it seems like when, uh, when, that's when, you, when the team needs to score, they go to Jamal. Are you kind of worried about like maybe a lack of a secondary option? Secondary well, I think, uh, you know, if you look at our season so far, Ethan's had some big games. Isaiah's had some big games. Jimmy's had some big games. And Jeray Foster is an outstanding player. But I think it's pretty – I mean, let's be fair to him. The guy's been out 10 months. Uh, he is not – and I'm so proud of him. He's done – I mean, he's playing better than I could have expected. He hasn't played basketball for 10 months. He's been rehabbing hours and hours and hours and hours. And he's obviously still not, you know, he's not all the way back, you know, in the physical sense. And, of course, it takes time to get all your rhythm and your game back. But uh, that's one thing I'm really optimistic about. I know he'll keep climbing. And so when if, if and when Jure becomes his normal self, now you've, now you've got a lot of different guys on a given night that, you know, can, can score the ball. Hopefully that's going to be the case. It needs to be the case. It's, it uh, darn well needs to be the case, and I think it will be. I have I have faith that uh, we can we can keep growing everyone, and I know Dre will just continue to get better and better because I don't think he's close to the player that uh, he who he really is. Is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Thank you.